Food Innovation Park. Uh, we'll start by having a brief uh, presentation about Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation Park. So we started by his, uh, their leader's visions and uh, His Highness Sheikh Sultan Al Qasimi, the ruler of Sharjah. Uh, he had the vision uh, back in over 20 years by establishing the university city in Sharjah. Uh, as you know, the university city uh, is home to 22 colleges and institutions and uh, which provides over 47,000 students uh, and 2,000 PhD holders. So this place was established as uh, the research and development hub for these universities and academic institutions. Uh, what we do here is we're trying to build the innovation ecosystem. We're generating employment, catalyzing knowledge economy and investing for the future. Uh, we work using the triple helix system, which is uh, filling the gap between government, academia and the business sector. We focus on six main pillars, uh, which are the environmental technologies and renewable energy, healthcare, digitization, mobility, logistics, and smart cities. We also have production design and architecture as well, and transportation. Uh, so far, we have um, anchored six deep tech pilot projects. Uh, they focus on the different six uh, pillars that we have. And uh, we're going to be showing later some examples of these technologies. Uh, we have so far registered over 100 companies as part of uh, Sharjah RTI Park. We have invested over $100 million uh, in investment. So this is an overview picture of what we have at the park, uh, some examples of the, the companies uh, which we work with currently. Uh, as you see, we have a global vision with relationships uh, worldwide with uh, a lot of countries and uh, companies such as ABB, we have Axiona, VTT, and a lot more. So this is an example we did with um, benchmarking Sharjah against seven global cities in the world. We benchmarked it against markets and investment, interfirm activity, knowledge and R&D, skills and human capital, infrastructure and culture, and governance and policy. This is one of the huge projects that we have, which focuses on transportation uh, technologies. It's a Skyway project. Uh, it has four different transportation pods with four different uh, velocities or speeds. We also have uh, Merlin, which is a completely sustainable uh, project by itself. It has an aquaponics farm, uh, which is powered through solar energy and wind turbines. And it also have a water desalination unit. Uh, this is um, Civil Twin Renewable uh, Energy, which is a solar PV panel testing uh, space. We also have Nepta Health, which is one of the leading uh, women's health application here at the park. Uh, we have Sharjah Open Innovation Lab as well. If you visit us at the park, you'll be able to see the facilities and the equipment that it has. Uh, it focuses on 3D printing. We have metal 3D printing, plastic, um, and much more. We also have textiles, uh, a lot of different machines actually. So this is a framework collaboration with the American University of Sharjah. It focuses on four main pillars. Um, we have, we're focusing on IP spin-off and licensing, entrepreneurship programs, uh, employment and internship and labs partnership. Uh, I'm gonna show you next some examples of the research projects which we have with the American University of Sharjah. This uh, project is of the 3D printed house. Uh, that we have. Uh, it's a research project that came out uh, from AUS, from one of the students actually. Uh, we also have uh, the Conductive Concrete Projects. It's a research project as well, focuses on focusing on a special 3D printing material. Uh, we have the exoskeleton as well. We have a group of students that are working on developing the exoskeleton um, as a graduation project. So these are some examples of the 2020 global um, activations. 
We did a lot of uh, webinars. Uh, we did the first Women in Tech Forum. And this year, we also had the second Women in Tech as well. Uh, we launched our first Sharjah Advanced Industry Accelerator. Uh, we also had our MENA Innovation Technology Transfer Summit. The first one was launched uh, last year, and we are also launching the second one this year in September as well. Uh, it was a very successful summit. We had over 5,000 participants from over 100 countries, and we had over 50 speakers. Uh, during the pandemic and the lockdown back in 2020, we had over 50 webinars uh, during the lockdown, it focused, uh, it focused on different topics uh, relating to our six focus areas. We also launched our Sharjah Angel Investors um, connection. We had uh, so many diplomatic tours and government events as well. Uh, one of the events that we launched um, back uh, in September last year was the 3D printing exhibition. Uh, it was very successful as it hosted um, the plastic 3D printing, metal and concrete as well. Uh, it had over 200 pieces. We had students also participating with some of the 3D printing um, models as well. Uh, these are one, some of the uh, activities that are coming. Uh, we have the smart cities, and the MENA Innovation Technology Transfer Summit as well. So next, uh, we have Mr. Akram Hamer, who is the founder and CEO of AR Engineering, uh, which is a Sharjah-based software development company. Uh, Mr. Akram's background is in mechanical engineering and aerospace. He works with a team of engineers to close the knowledge and skills gap that exists in the industry. Uh, he'll be talking about XR and education, which is extended reality. Mr. Akram, you have the mic. Assalamu Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you can all hear me well. I just want to double check. And um, first of all, thank you for taking the time um, coming here today. Um, it means a lot. Um, we truly want to um, help uh, en engage in the community and um, also uh, cover important topics that we believe will be beneficial. Uh, basically, um, I'm Akram Amir, I'm founder of AR Engineering. We're located at SRTI P Park. Uh, we work in XR technology um, uh, area. And I'll tell you what we do um, shortly in the presentation. So I just wanted to welcome you all. So let me just share the screen and um, I'll tell you a bit more about us. So right here. All right. So basically, what we're going to cover today, we're going to give you an introduction about XR technology and education and training. Now, the main focus will be on like the full on benefits. And we're going to show you examples of projects that we and our team have worked on. Um, but first of all, I want to actually know more about you guys. Um, I want to know if any of you is familiar with XR or extended reality. So if you are, just put in number one in the chat. Um, I, I would see the results. Uh, if you've heard of it, um, but never used it before, you can put number two. Um, if, you if you never ever heard about XR, you never used it, you can just put in number three in the chat. Um, this, I can know who is attending and uh, what you guys know. And your backgrounds. All right. So that's, it. that's for the beginning. Okay. All right, sounds good. Okay, that's cool. Now I can see there's a lot of ones, that's perfect. I can see some people have heard of it um, and as well, okay. Then then I guess um, if this is the, the case, then not only will I give you um, basics, like I'll talk about the beginning of the technology, but also I'll go a little bit in depth. I can use some terms that um, are quite advanced, but anyways, um, it's really cool to see uh, this uh, amount of people that are here. Okay, let me give you a background. So this is our team. We're, we're a group of engineers. Um, since uh, we were in college, we always wanted to do something to improve the education uh, the experience. Um, so back in 2019, we gathered up. We, uh, we said, okay, we're on a mission right now. We want to make education, engineering education specifically, that's how we started, more immersive, more engaging, and um, in a way where we would really enjoy uh, just like learning and uh, and um, enjoy the the 
the education uh, like uh, uh, process and we enjoy our years of of hard uh, uh, learning because engineering is quite tough so when you simplify topics it will it'll make us really like enjoy our time so that was our main goal uh, we're focused on operations maintenance uh, training and also edge tech solutions right because at the end training is in, is in many areas big companies train and also in uh, colleges they educate students so it's kind of the same um, like um, uh, domain um, so basically this is our team um, this is me akram i'm the founder and ceo we have yasser the co-founder uh, Zane, uh, software developer, and we also have engineers with us. Um, that's in short. Um, so, as I told you, why did we why did we start this? Why did we went on go on this mission? Basically, we saw that in the edu- in, uh, in our college times, uh, most of the educational content was like outdated, right? Some of these books are very old. Pictures are like black and white. Some of them are not even colored. So, um, the the professor he has to put in the effort, show us videos, and take us to workshops, but. Um, how many times can can we experience that um, in a semester? So we're like, we need more than that. Um, and yeah, so there's lack of interactivity with the real engineering systems, as you can see. So I'm an aerospace engineer. So my background, I studied aerospace engineering, and then I did my master's in mechanical engineering. And in all those years, we learn about turbine jet engines. We learn about many different engineering systems, but we rarely see them like once or twice a year. Um, not much, honestly. So uh, we're like, you know what? We really need to find a way to uh, to uh, like solve this and uh, and make engineering uh, education more more learning more engaging. Um, there are solutions in the market, and I'm sure in this call there are a lot of developers, people that actually use XR technology and have seen examples, and I'll show it to you. Uh, but there's always limitations, right? So we're like, okay, we want something simple, scalable, right? Uh, we, so we saw what's what immersive technology solutions were in the market. So Okay, so there's ha- there work has to be done there in that area. So um, that was another point. And then, of course, due to the pandemic, um, of course, distance learning. Now most of the students are at home, so even workshop times are less, right? If they used to before, if they used to go like to the workshop once a week or twice, right now they barely even go like once or twice a month, right? But that's that's if they go to the workshop. So that's another another, another reason why we wanted to like uh, uh, really get into this. So basically we said, okay, who in the engineering uh, sector, right? From the big companies, from people around the world have used this kind of technology and have seen results. So we saw, okay, let's see the big guys. You got Boeing, Airbus, BMW, Porsche, all of them have used XR technology in one form or another. You have Boeing, they used AR. They were able to, um, for example, reduce uh, the production time by 25% uh, and increase the productivity. You got Airbus, similar results. Uh, we actually worked with uh, developers that work with those big guys, so we know the the, the insights like from that we heard from the engineers, uh, the response. So I'll give you the experience. I'll tell you what happened with us and um, what we what we did. Uh, so basically, yeah, you can even see car manufacturers. You got BMW; they they used uh, uh, XR technology in one form or another. Uh, Porsche; they reduced the design time as well or the, the solving problems. Um, of course, so we we talked we talked about the challenges. So these are like four main pillars. Uh, about uh, what what is driving uh, this uh, this this trend towards adoption of XR tech? So you have the demographics. You got the new generation that is coming, right? Students, like all the the young engineers that are graduating, um, they're tech savvy. They have really modern devices, right? So we have to take advantage of these devices. We have to say, we have to make use of them, um, not just use them use them for gaming and social media. No, let's do something useful with them. Let's use the power of the CPU and GPU and those devices, and let's uh, use it to make uh, education more engaging. Uh, sustainability, of course, um, and, and even big companies, even colleges, um, there's there's a lot of waste of resources. Time is a way, uh, they waste time, they waste paper, they waste uh, many, many, many other areas. When you use XR in one way or another, you can actually uh, cater it in a direction where you can save uh, a lot in, in those areas. Um, and of course, technology is available. Like uh, it's easily available to us, right? Right now, on, you go into the internet, you can see whatever top softwares are there in the world, and you can download them, start learning, and use them, and develop things. So technology is available, and and you can see the trends that are happening. So this is also pushing uh, the advancements of uh, XR technology and the adoption rate. And of course, due to COVID, there are many uh, issues. I mean, so so many issues. We can't even get into them uh, today, but. As you, as you saw, the distance learning and all those have big have big effects as well. Um, basically, for people that don't know, XR is basically the general term 
that is uh, that is said um, for all these three types of um, experiences or immersive experiences, right? Um, you got virtual reality where you wear a headset that uh, that uh, gets you engaged in, in a different world. You have augmented reality headset that is transparent, basically. It lets you see the content and at the same time see the world, right? See the, see the table, the floor in front of you, and at the same time you can see the content. So it's the content placed on the world, right? but virtual reality takes you in that world. Um, then you have mixed reality headsets. Um, that um, lets you even uh, use your, your fingers, gestures to control stuff. Um, so basically, here is the modern extended reality devices, all right? I'll, I'll give you the names of the people, uh, like the companies, the big guys that have done, uh, that have modern devices. There are, uh, you have in the VR headset uh, uh, range, you have uh, HC Vive, very well known, good quality headset, used for gaming, and now it's even used in professional side training and uh, airspace in many areas. Um, you have the Microsoft Hulu lens. That's one of the best uh, mixed reality headsets out there. Um, Apple has a very simple form of, um, of uh, AR. It's, it's available in most of your pockets. In fact, most of you, if you have iPhones, iPhone 6, I think iPhone 6 and above, 6S or above, or, or I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it has AR kits built in. Um, you have uh, Android devices have AR core built in. So, so these kind of technologies are available in, in our pockets right now, right? So that's good. Um, so, um, so let's see. Okay, since we give you a background about this tech, let's see around the world what's going on. This is a research that was done by PwC. Um, they estimated that in 2019, there were 800,000 people that benefited from using XR technology uh, one way or another, right? So that's, that's quite good. That, that's good numbers. So 800,000 people back in 2019. Well, let's see the results in 2020. 2020, 2021, and the years that are coming. Um, now, look, so they, so obviously here, they say that in the UAE, there are 42,000 people that are going to benefit from using this tech by 2030. These are real good numbers, but uh, obviously, uh, at the end, we are the guys in the market, right? We are the guys in the UAE. We are the guys in the GC region. It's us that will determine this growth, right? How well are we going to adopt this? How, how, how well are we going to use it in which areas? Um, so, uh, but this shows you the potential worldwide and the contribution to the GDP, 4.1 billion just in UAE. Imagine Saudi Arabia and all the neighboring countries. It's, it's really cool numbers. Um, so these are the industries. If you look at the industries, the domains like education sector, engineering, healthcare. So I'll give you some statistics. Um, it might not be shown here, but before COVID, before COVID, education wasn't even the number one industry that was uh, that XR was being adopted in, or like it was moving. It was it was construction, engineering, healthcare, and then education was like I think it was third or fourth. But when COVID came and the education sector needed a lot of help, right? They said, you know what, we ha we have to do something for the education side. So a lot of companies started to develop content for the education side. Um, of course, be, even before COVID, there were already guys in the market doing things for high school, colleges, universities. But right now, it's like way more people. Even the big companies started to get into the education side. This shows you the demand um, in this sector. And, and we are also in this domain right now. And we also work closely with people that are in the engineering side and uh, so on. Um, so I'll show you uh, this graph. I really like it. I, I show it to people most of the time. Um, it tells you... Um, it tells you let me just check it. So, yeah. So the sector is divided into three uh, three domains. You have people that um, create the hardware. I showed you HTC. I showed you Microsoft, right? Those guys, they, they make the hardware. But also some of them, like, like even Microsoft and so on, they also make software. And there are also people in this industry that create content. Us at, AR, us at AR Engineering, at the beginning, we were just making content. But right now, especially after COVID and all that, we started working closely with the uh, software guys, right? For example, we started working with the guys uh, Pace Lab Weaver. So it's very necessary because we have to customize software for uh, many, uh, many clients, for um, different uses. So it's very important for the content uh, creators to even partner up with software developers, uh, software companies. Uh, uh, that's really important. Uh, so that's basically an overview uh, of the industry. Now, let's get into the nice part. Let me show you the videos. Let me show you uh, what's been done in XR field. Some of it is our work uh, and uh, our, our, that uh, we've done. Um, let's see if I can, all right, let's go next. So I'm sharing the video. I need to optimize for a video clip. Okay, here's the first video. Here, this 
we did this for engineering students. Uh, it was for aerospace engineering students. And um, basically, it's in AR mode. It works on the iPad, right? So you open up the iPad, you open the app, you click, you can see an engine, a Pratt & Whitney engine. This one is for the A320. And then you can see it in 3D mode. The cool part is, is that you can even see it in AR mode. So you click on AR, the camera opens up, the, the floor uh, is scanned. I know the picture might be blurry because it's screen share and all that, but um, I mean, it, the quality is, is way, way higher than this. Um, you will, uh, we'll send you the link to the video later on. You'll be able to see it. Um, so yeah, so you can walk freely around uh, the model, right? You can, uh, you can, uh, you, you're total freedom, right? You're not even constrained by the 3D mode. You can go inside the engine. You can see the internal components. Um, you can even split it up into pieces. Uh, I'll, I'll forward here a little bit to save on time. I'll show you uh, some of the functions right here. So, so as you can see, the engine is just sitting there. You have functions. So basically, okay, let me uh, just open this up. Let me see what's inside, right? You can click a button. You can split every single piece. Um, you can uh, see the labeling. What is it called? The naming. Um, you can uh, you can see uh, like you can see them in re in its true scale. That's that's the real value. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, you can see the labeling. So it's it's a if I want to compare this to the traditional way I was learning when back in college, um, it was just looking at pictures, presentation slides, trying to find videos on YouTube. But right now it's just it's way more convenient. Uh, just take out the iPad or my iPhone, right? Open the app, and and I can start learning and and seeing uh, how this engineering system uh, looks like. And the same thing for the instructor. We actually made an app for the instructor. I'll tell you more about and how he can uh, use it to teach students uh, remotely. How he can use it uh, if he's teaching the students through Zoom. He can just open up the 3D app and start explaining to them uh, the components of any any type of system. So as you can see here, you can open it up and so on. One cool thing we added it's because I want to move to the other videos. Um, we added controls. You can actually this engine is quite big. It's full scale, right? This is quite huge. But we added controls where you can flip it around the way you like. So as you can see here, you can adjust the scale. You can flip it right and left. You can make it rotate. You can play around. You can fit it in your environment uh, in whichever way you like. So this is really crazy because in real life, you can't do this to an engine. You can't really rotate it easily and, and flip it. Uh, so, I mean, having this uh, in the power of the hands and the students, in the students' hands, having this power to manipulate uh, large engineering systems is very valuable. Um, so yeah, so, so as you can see now it's full scale. So, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm actually holding the iPad in my, in my eyesight level, right? So, uh, I'm, I'm quite tall. So, so this engine is like, it's like this high and it's quite high and, uh, you can see the, uh, the, the component, like you can see the oil filter in its, in its full size. Um, it really makes you really like get close to the real engineering systems. Okay. So I guess uh, we covered quite a lot here on this on this part. Let me just uh, move forward because we want to also give you a chance to ask questions at the end. And also I, we have an announcement for you guys because uh, um, we want to get to that. Here's another example, okay? Um, here's a virtual reality um, experience um, of, they, they do it for engineering, uh, for maintenance engineers. Yeah. So let me see the audios on, one second. Okay. So this is basically a virtual reality experience, right? This is where um, you have the engineers, they or whoever it is, even the students is fine. They can just wear the VR headset and then hold on the, the joystick, the remote, and then they can start learning how to change the oil on an, on an engine, right? Big airlines or even training academies, they wouldn't even allow students to do that on, unless they were supervised uh, so many, uh, like uh, so many, <laughs> like um, like very, a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, it's very difficult to like, uh, not just super supervisors, but the condition, the, the engine uh, can be on the aircraft, has to be in the hangar and all that. So it's very expensive to do that in real life. Uh, but now when you have it in VR, right? You can you can give it to the student and he can do this kind of, uh, of uh, simulation as many times as he wants. It doesn't matter. He can do as many mistakes. He can uh, repeat it. Um, that's, that's one of the really uh, uh, great things. Um, so basically, uh, let me just uh, forward here. So this is basically the VR example. This is another example. This, in fact, was what was a very successful one. Uh, it's done for cabin crew. So you know cabin crew, they train them on how to open the cabin door and the aircraft, right? 
So basically, um, they, they do them like a number of times a month or a year. Uh, but uh, sometimes the, they have to, when they go to the real test, they go ahead and they, sometimes they don't pass. So they have to repeat it again and again and again. So they're like, you know what? Repeating these tests so many times actually costs a lot to the airline. So like, you know what? Let's give them the training ahead of time, like a simulation training ahead of time using VR. So when they go to the test, they're already prepared. So they won't have to fail as much, right? And airlines were able to save a lot of money doing that. Um, so this is an example. This is a, they, they put the VR headset for the cabin crew, and then they go ahead and train them how to uh, open the, the cabin uh, door. And uh, in, in, in any situation, it doesn't matter. You can make any scenario. You can make emergency scenarios when there's an accident, God forbid, or anything, right? And the same thing, they could fail as many times as they want. It's not going to harm them. In fact, they're just going to learn more. Um, as you can see, the quality of simulation is quite good. Um, of course, with streaming, the, the quality is, is low, but the quality of the video is actually quite high. Um, so yeah, this is another example of cabin crew uh, training. And also you can actually put scenarios. You can make something go wrong in the middle of the test. So that's something uh, really useful. Uh, you can do simulations uh, in different ways. Um, okay, this is airspace. So we all know that pilots have simulators, right? Um, not, I, I don't know if all of you know, but I mean, most people know that pilots, they, they have simulators. They go through the uh, simulator training many times. Uh, because at the end, uh, there are lives of people on board, right? So they have to train them as, as, uh, as much as possible. Uh, this is a simple type. They could use them in smaller flight schools because there are so many flight schools around the world that don't have the big budgets. This is something that is useful for them. So check this out. Instead of buying a big simulator, right? Something that is very expensive, you can actually connect a VR headset, right? And instead of having so many screens, the VR headset is your environment, it's your screen. And then you can have the controls, the joystick, the throttle and all that. You can just hold it and you can start uh, flying the airplane. And the whole environment, you're already immersed in it because you're wearing the VR headset. So that's one of the really good things uh, about VR technology. It makes pilot training uh, 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 like better, uh, lower cost and so on. Um, of course, um, um, you, can, you, can, you don't even need to have this as a main test. You can have this as like a, a pre, you can train the pilots on this or the students uh, beforehand and then take them to the real test later on. But overall, you're going to see improvement in the results. And, and we have statistics for that. And we're going to show you, show you that uh, at the end. Um, so this is for pilot training. Okay, so let's get a little bit more into the train into the remote support side. Let's see what some companies use. Um, so basically, as you can see here, this is an engineer. He's, uh, he's supporting his staff. His staff is right here. He's holding this uh, small iPad. He's looking at a component that he wants to fix. So basically, he just the camera opens up, and then he's on a phone call with this uh, with his engineer. And then he's telling him, "Listen, this is the part." He's putting the arrow on this component, telling him uh, replace this, do that. Um, so basically, instead of just on a normal phone call where you have to um, like tell him, "Okay, can you see the blue cable? Can you see that?" You know what? Just take out your phone, open the camera. It's like a Zoom call, but the benefit here, because you have AR, but because you have augmented reality integrated, right? You can actually point on objects. You can you can drop in models. You can put in arrows. Um, it gives you way more uh, options to do. Um, of course, this is on an iPad. Now, Microsoft and other companies they have it available on the headset, so you can actually wear a headset, and then you can actually support your staff. So that's another way, which is more advanced. But this is a, a very uh, simple way that is uh, low cost and you can like, just take out your phone and, and uh, get support right away. Um, and they are headset is quite good as well. Um, okay, this is not, this doesn't have to do with engineering anyways, but this is an example in the medical field, but it works on the same technology the same software is the same base. And I'll show you this uh, in, in the next slides. Um, basically you can see the anatomy of the human body because I, I'm sure on this call, we have people that are from colleges and universities I want to show them that the same tech that we are working on, that we have, right, uh, can run no matter what type of simulation and no matter what type of, uh, of domain you are in, education, healthcare, um, it, it can support them all. Um, basically, you have uh, the anatomy of the human body. You can see the heart. You can see the lung. Um, this is using uh, uh, HoloLens, like the, uh, so, uh, the Microsoft HoloLens. It's an AR uh, glasses. You can use any other AR headset. Uh, but there's also it's also available on the iPad. We can integrate this with an iPad, uh, with an iPhone, uh, any device that, uh, of your need. Um, okay, I've showed you so many examples right now. Um, I'm I'm going a little bit fast because uh, if if I'm gonna go a little bit slowly, I'm gonna go right uh, so many like in depth, and I don't want to do that um, because we want to keep it for another time when we have interactive discussion between us. Uh, but um, this is basically uh, like a, an insight. Okay, guys, so check this out. So um, 
so I don't know if the video is clear, but or not. Yeah, okay, it's, it's, it's there. Um, so XR softwares, there are uh, various XR softwares developers in the world, but 60%, 60 percent of XR content that is developed by developers is, is was made in Unity, right? 60%. This shows you that Unity is actually uh, has the larger market share. Um, the majority of the developers develop using Unity. They could develop using any other platform, it's cool, but Unity actually has the majority market share. And uh, I'll give you a background about us in AR engineering. We not only do we use Unity, but we also use uh, Pace Lab Weaver. I'll tell you more about it. Um, it's integrated together. The reason I'm telling you about it because uh, if, if we have guys in this call that are developers, people that want to learn, it's very important for you to use the top um, XR softwares in the industry so you can really improve the quality of your content and better help uh, your clients. And the same thing for the guys at the colleges. I want to show you the best softwares out there so you can tell the difference later on when you want to start using it. Um, so we use actually Unity and, uh, and Pace Lab Weaver to develop our own uh, uh, solutions, as I told you. This is a, a educational platform that we made for engineering students. Right, they can use it to uh, learn about uh, various engineering systems. We added a lot of models, uh, um, like in various categories. We cover civil engineering, uh, oil and gas. We cover uh, um, aerospace, uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, um, and we can also custom anything for the colleges that they need. Uh, we can even custom anything even for the medical guys if needed, um, or biomedical if they want to learn about uh, uh, like uh, any any type of system or or, or device in the. Yeah, that you need to learn about it's fine we can use the same software base uh, so basically this is us we cover multiple devices and the way we can do it how we can cover a pc and an ipad and an iphone vr headset all at the same time is quite crucial and, and uh, very few people can do that but um luckily we were able to do this uh, because we have the power of because uh, we're using weaver um, i want to give you a little bit a small short video i want to show you how things go like step number one two three how are things done Right. And then later on, um, perhaps at the end of the workshop, I'm going to ask you a question. Who wants to continue with us in a, a longer workshop in the future? I'll give you more in-depth details and even train you guys on this if needed. Um, so check this out. This is Weaver, basically. Um, so basically, Weaver is comprised of three parts. All right. You have the first part uh, is, uh, is the creator module is where you create stuff. You create experiences. And then you have the second part where you manage and then you have the player. So here are the three parts. You have the creator here on the left, all right? And then you have, all right, so here. So the creator software is basically a no code, right? You don't need to code, nothing. It's you just choose it, you put in the model, the scene. Um, just let me tell you the, this example. So this is a A320 aircraft. They used it to train pilots on how to do the walk around before the, the flight. So they call it the pre-flight check. Right, pre-flight check are done done by not just pilots but even um, engineers and so on. Um, um, so so yeah. So we're, this is a pre-flight. We're creating a pre-flight uh, walk around um, in XR, right? And we're going to show you how it's created. So check this out. The model of the aircraft is there, right? And the in Unity, and of course using the power of Weaver. So you put it there. You you select uh, whatever you want to be done, right? You say, okay, this is the oxygen door. We want to check the oxygen door. And the pilot has to check the oxygen door. You put in the action, you put in the buttons, you just drag and drop the commands, right? And then after that, you, uh, you after you're done putting the commands and what the requirements that need to be done, then you put in the second one, right? The second step, you put in the third step, and then you connect them all together. As you can see here, you just connect them and you get this mesh network, like, like this mesh of all the steps and scenarios that are going to happen. You didn't have to code anything, no line of code. And then after you finish with that, you export the package and then you have a manager software. This is where the instructors, the colleges, us, the developers, we upload the things and we give it to the users, the students, the engineers. Um, you just write, okay, this is an A320 type rating. We're going to train this is for the training, for the, cab, for the pilots, for the engineers. Um, I so I want to just go back here. I want to show you, show you, look at here, check this out. So after we uploaded the procedure, uh, the, the things that we did. You can choose whatever device you want. Check this out. You can deploy it to a VR headset. You can give it to them an AR or iPad. doesn't matter. They can pick up whatever device they like. So you can have two pilots training on a VR headset and then the others are using their iPad. The others are using different devices. And all of them, you'll be able to see their performance, right? You'll, and and uh, the results. You, you don't have to just choose one device or one thing. You can choose whatever you want. Um, so here you go. You just upload whatever you, you developed, right? 
you write in the category, the class name, um, at the colleges and the universities, in this case, it will be civil engineering department, it will be aerospace um, courses, whatever it is. Uh, in this case, this is for the airline. Um, so it's just similar in different industries, but similar way how you're going to upload things. Um, so yeah, so so after that, you can see the group of students. So those students are going to be in this class. And then check this out. You can see the results. You can see the performance of, of the people, right? Um, before, uh, to see analytics, it requires a lot of uh, complex systems and so on. And because, because you already deployed it on their devices and because it's already built using Unity and Weaver, you can actually capture all their performances and results. You can see the average time. You can see what do they do. Um, as you can see, the average best time is 37 minutes. Um, so, so yeah, you can compare all the results and you can actually mark them. You can take it as an exam if you want. And here's the player. So this is what the player, the user sees or the, or the student. Um, even the instructor can see this view as well. He can go in and then he can choose his class or whatever he needs to do or assignment. Um, and then he can open it up, right? He goes through any mode he wants, guided mode. He wants to go experience mode. And then he can start loading up the environment and start learning or testing or, or doing the exam. Um, and doing step number one and two and three, and he, he can repeat it as many times as he wants. And this is the, one of the main advantages is doing it as many times as you want. So yeah, basically this is it. This is what um, like the, the basics of how things are created, managed and deployed. Um, and of course, later on we can go in depth, uh, but this is just a quick uh, insight into this. And of course, after he finishes, uh, there's also scoreboard. You can see all these performance and uh, the time he spent and all that. Okay, guys, so basically this is it. Um, this is how we did this as well. Creator, manager, and player. We create stuff, we deploy it to the students and, uh, and the users, and um, they can open the player app and use it in any way they want. Um, okay, check this out. So this is one of the most important things. I believe this is one of the reason why I believe a lot of you here, you want to know XR tech and benefits and, and how you can actually integrate it into uh, your, your work. Uh, so look, you have the most, one of the most benefits, right? You have the knowledge retention rate, 75%, right? Increase in knowledge retention rate. These are, by the way, real results from a real report. Um, the link is here. Perhaps we'll share it with you later on. Um, you can view it. 75% uh, increase in knowledge retention. That's very, very important, especially in, in these days when you, you really need people and students to learn about multiple multiple uh, like um, subjects and topics and, and, and especially modern uh, 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 topics. And, and they're still in the college days you really need them to graduate and they can still remember what they, what they, uh, what they learned. The same, and the same way with the big engineering companies, you need to train your staff and, and make sure that your staff will remember whatever you taught them after two or three months, right? If you're going to just give it to them in a PDF file or just a video, yeah, it might work, right? If somebody really puts in the effort, but in an experience like this, it's really uh, memorable. Uh, the 90% the median recall accuracy, that's amazing, right? Uh, and of course, saving money, you 33% reduction in training costs. That's really important, especially for the large uh, corporations. They say, they say this one, this, this alone, 33% saving. That's in some companies will be hundreds of thousands of dollars, some of them millions as well. 60% um, reduction in training time. This means they can even get more training now, right? You save 60% of training time. This means he has more time to do other things, perhaps even more training. So he's, his skill level is going to increase. Um, and of course, when they asked all the guys that took the training, 97% of them, they said, you know what, we want more training, we want more XR experiences, we want more uh, usage of XR in our training and education. This is how much they loved it. And this is the same thing that we, that we want to do. We want to uh, spread this out, we want to teach people, we want to uh, um, get this uh, all across uh, our region. Um, so, so we can benefit all the organizations and the educational institutes, and we'll be happy, happy to help anybody in this domain, even uh, developers and software companies. So I want to ask you guys a question. I, I hope you guys aren't going to answer this uh, because it will determine the next thing. Um, I want to see if you guys, did you see any, uh, do, you, do you see the benefits of using XR in your field of work, right? So look at your field of work, wherever you are, if you're in the college, you're in the company, uh, wherever you guys are, um, do you see the benefits? If, if yes, put, it, put in number one in the chat. Um, if a, li a little bit, put in number two. Um, I, I'd like to see your answers. Yeah. So let me open up the chat here. Let me see. The chat. Nice. Okay. That's really good. I'm really happy. Okay. I believe then, then all of you guys that really loved this, right, that said that, yes, you do, you, you're going to really love what we have next for you. 
right? We have something prepared, and this is something that I believe will be very valuable for you. It will increase your knowledge in, in a big way. Okay, the answers are really, really cool. Architecture, interiors, I can see people dropping in some notes. Really beautiful. Um, really nice. Also, we, we're going to have answer the questions and answers. This is the second question I want to ask you guys. So, would you like to uh, come to an exclusive workshop, right, that we can host, where you're going to be, uh, we're going to teach you how XR Tech is built and also deployed across any organization. If, um, if yes, then you can just go ahead and type in your email in the chat, uh, or even you can just follow SRTIP and you're going to get the updates. Or I can drop in my email and my LinkedIn um, here, uh, and you can just contact me on my phone and WhatsApp, and we're going to send you the invite link to that workshop. We're going to host it. We're going to see virtually um, from SRTIP, or um, we'll see how it works out, uh, depending where you are. But I believe virtually is, is, is beneficial because no matter where you are and around the world, you'll be able to learn. So definitely we'll get in touch with you guys and, uh, and invite you to this workshop. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, you know what? Thank you very much for listening. And, um, and I want to actually hear from you guys. So if you have any questions. So this is basically us. This is our details. You can get in touch with us whenever you want. Um, we'd love to hear from you what you need. So, so yeah, let me, let me see the questions and answer what you have. I can see there are a couple of questions here. Thank you guys for dropping in the emails. We'll definitely send you the invite later on. So, okay. Let me see the questions. Cool. All right. So, Murad is asking, can we get the slides? Sure, why not? We can send you the slides. All right. Um, is there any applications on building environment? Building environment, you're talking about uh, uh, like civil engineering and so on. Yeah, yeah, there are. In fact, this is one of the things we're working on, uh, building environment. Um, so yeah, so so basically uh, your answer uh, for the civil engineering is we do. Uh, Ray is asking, can Unity be used for both iOS and Android uh, platforms? Can Unity be used for both? Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, Unity, uh, you can deploy to so many devices, even PlayStations, even PlayStation 4, it doesn't matter what device. I mean, I mean, I, I didn't put the picture today. I should have put it, uh, added it. Um, Unity supports so many platforms, so many. So that's a good thing about Unity. Okay, uh, Taiba is asking, how are how do you use it in oil and gas industry? Okay, so in the workshop that we're gonna host, we're gonna cover oil and gas. Basically, you can see the whole oil and gas field, right? And then you can see every single component there labeled. You can, you can experience it, split it up into pieces. You can even see how the oil is extracted and, and spread out. Uh, this is one of the real cool things about oil and gas uh, industry. Okay, let's see any questions else in the chat. Uh, what about human errors? Yeah, you can actually simulate human errors, Iyad. So Iyad, you're asking about human errors, right? Like um, perhaps we can see what mistakes you might do or what mistakes uh, or possibilities. Actually, one, one thing that were integrated um, you can actually have the computer randomly generate errors or mistakes, and you can see how he acts, right? And then you, even if he does mistakes, the, the person does mistakes, you can, all that will be captured, so you can see his, uh, his performance. So that's one of the real good things. Um, also, if you guys want to raise your hand and ask a question, I'm open with that if you want. Um, how can we see who is asking a question? Um, even if you want to ask a question like you can with audio, I don't mind that. Um, if you guys can help me uh, with that. Yeah. Okay, please send the slides. Thank you. All right, we'll send you the slides. Uh, what are what are the expected challenges in the UAE market to sell and implement XR? Well, well, uh, Haytham, he's asking this question. Well, listen, the challenges in the UAE are similar to challenges around the world. Basically, number one, if you're a software developer or developing company, you have to really educate your clients, right? Educate them, that's number one, so they can understand what you have and see the value. Um, and this challenge is similar in the UAE and every other country. Um, and, and, and basically, at the end, once you educate them, show them what you have, show them the benefits, um, they're going to be excited to use it, uh, hopefully, especially if you're going like, to show them how much, uh, like, if the increase in knowledge retention, how much cost they will save, and so on. Uh, Ray is asking another question. Have you worked on building management systems, fire security, and HVAC? So building management systems, okay. So like, are you talking about testing those systems? Or are you talking about simulating um, scenarios? Like if you click this, this, or this, what's going to happen? Um, that's all possible, man. Yeah. I mean, we, I ha personally, I haven't done it, uh, but I think uh, our team actually have, uh, have, um, have done projects on uh, fire 
um, where you have to train uh, uh, firefighters to turn off the fire, like uh, the fire when it happens in the hangar, uh, or even uh, engineers. So uh, there was actually, I remember there was a uh, a, simula a simulation or project that was done uh, for a hangar, an aircraft hangar. Uh, so what happens when when an aircraft hangar catches fire, right? What are the steps that you have to do? So we, we it was done in VR. So the, you'll train the staff on, uh, he puts in the VR headset and the fire happens. And then, okay, you have to test him. What are you going to do? And of course you can train him beforehand and then you can see his performance. So, I, I mean, that's that's closer to what you're asking. Um, yeah, HVAC, 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 right? HVAC, you're talking about like air conditioning and all that. Um, in fact, look, you're talking about mechanical engineering here. So yeah, so um, in the mechanical engineering side, HVAC topics are actually one of the most uh, complicated ones in mechanical engineering. A lot of students have weakness in that area. So uh, we really, we're actually working on this. In fact, I already have 3D models prepared. I got the guys prepared it for us, uh, for HVAC systems, uh, because we want to uh, make it easier for the students at the college to learn about them. Uh, okay. Um, Iyad is asking another question. What about the real conditions in real cases, such as temperature, pressure, in case of accidents in nuclear power plants? Uh, yeah, nuclear power plants. Okay. So basically, um, you can simulate whatever you want. It's just about what you really see the benefit in, right? If you want to simulate like the worst case scenario that could happen with a nuclear power plant, you can do the simulation. As long as you have the plan in mind, right? We can do the simulation. Um, for example, you want to put in scenarios where the, uh, what will happen when the pressure increases, what will happen when uh, a certain uh, pressure decreases and what will happen to the temperature. You want to simulate all these results and then you want to have your ability uh, where you can have an effect on the outcome, right? Your actions, your, your actions, if they're right or wrong, you can do that because it's a, because simulating a nuclear power plant, right? And the conditions and, and the, it's very similar to simulating any type of other engineering system and aircraft. What happens when you click that button, when you do that? Um, it's, it's very simple. It's just the, the model, the environment is different. And as well, it's you guys, you, you, you are the engineers, you're the people working in the, in the field. You have to tell us about what are the uh, scenarios that you want us to, to work on and do. How can it be used in interior and architecture? Uh, uh, um, okay, so interior and architecture is it's already used. Um, in fact, if you design things, right? If you design a 3D model of, a, of, uh, uh, of something you did, right? And then you wanna show it to a client, you wanna, you wanna show it to your engineering team before you even go ahead and prototype it, you can design stuff, right? And then you can push it to Unity Right, or put it in Unity, or put uh, uh, and push it to your devices and see it in AR, see it in VR. You can use an augmented the same way I see an aircraft engine split it up into pieces. You can see your design, right? Uh, you can see it reflected on the real world, real uh, world, and you can see it in in, in its true colors and its true form. Um, so you can use it in prototyping. You can use it to showcase to sell. Um, you can use it in many areas. Yeah, I advise you. Architecture engineering is uh, architecture is, is quite good. Yad is asking an article. Mashallah, Yad, uh, your, uh, your questions are real nice. Using XR, we, we use only one sense of human being, which is the vision, but in reality, we use many senses. Yeah, you're right about that. The thing is, look, I mean, of course, you, you can never reach the real physical training, right? This is virtual simulation. And by the way, it's the same thing with pilots, man. I mean, when pilots, when they put them in simulators, right? Um, it's not the real aircraft, but it's the closest as possible they can get to a real aircraft, right? But at the end, it's it, like it's it's always like increases their knowledge and it, it gets them trained to bad scenarios. But at least it's some way of training is better than nothing. So so yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. Um, okay. So hey, them. How to use XR in retail online shopping? Oh yeah, in retail online shopping. You can if you have an e-commerce store, you can just put in a 3D model of your product, right? And then if somebody has an iPhone, just clicks on the object and he can see it uh, see it in AR. So before buying it, you can see your shoes on your feet before buying it. You can see the shirt if you. Yeah, it's a lot of users in that area. I advise you to go and research Hatham. Um, Aja, do you have any idea on how XR is already used in secondary and upper secondary levels in education, younger students in UAE? Yeah, I have seen some people use it. So, uh, so okay. So in schools and high, uh, high schools and, and schools, it's being adopted everywhere in the world, not just in the UAE, right? There are, there are schools in the UAE doing it, even colleges. But at what level? That's the thing. At what level? Are you deploying it to a small workshop, one or two guys, or are you giving it to many users, letting them uh, use it freely at their home and so on? So yes, it's being used. I've seen it in biology. I've seen it in chemistry. Uh, but the level that we aim for, the level that I'm talking about today, that I'm telling you about, 
it's a different thing. It's where you can capture data analytics, it's where you can see the results, manage the students. It's, it's another level. That's what, uh, that's what we're aiming for here. Can we consider the XR as hands-on experience? Yeah, mashallah, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to take, get in touch with you later on. I want to see, uh, yeah. Okay, so can we consider the XR as hands-on experience, which most of the companies ask uh, to, yes, 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 definitely. In fact, actually one of, there are, there are some companies that use XR as a way to test the employees, to test not just employees, even interns and people that are applying to the job and see their performance, the way they're going to act. You can test like 50 people, Right and and compare all the results so you can better choose them. Um, it has asking a question: Does it work better on Apple computers than Windows? Um, the, look, the Apple computer, Windows doesn't matter. It's all about um, how well you develop the software, and of course the CPU performance of the laptop. But it, uh, we actually made it work on even very weak PCs. We just we add settings that can adjust uh, the graphics and so on. So, um, but but Apple, I mean. Almost a lot of things work very well in Apple. So yeah, I'm I'm an Apple guy, but but anyways, but um, but yeah, it works. If I have I will have it working on Windows, uh, iOS, Android. It works good in all of them. Yeah, how can you model the human behavior specifically in case of an accident? Okay, so uh, so you want to model human behavior? Okay, so human behavior. Um, I mean, uh, this case will depend on you. What type of behavior you do you want to model? Right? If you want to go in depth. Uh, you want to, for example, um, I remember there was one example where they were the test HR staff performance. They they put them in a VR environment and then they put another uh, avatar of a person speaking to him. And then they see the way they speak together and interact. And then they see the way the other person thinks. Um, so so the human behavior, by the way, the, the, when we showed you the, the, the analytics site and the manager software, right? That way you can see the actions of the person. What did he do? What did he, where did he go? What uh, what mistakes did he uh, do? And what things did he do right? That's that's another thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you worked on building management? Okay. Thanks. Okay. So I think I answered all the questions here. Okay. Question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. The, in uh, different accidents, the uh, accident you know, with behavior would be different. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, then in that case, um, um, of course, it's very tough to model everything. So this is why you have to uh, really see what, if you're doing it for a client or for you, you have to see what do you really care about. These scenarios, model them and, uh, and, uh, and simulate them. Um, so, yeah. So, all right. Um, I think this is it. I think we have six minutes left, but yeah. yeah, we, yeah I think we, we covered a lot of questions. Most of the yeah. questions were very interesting. It was very interesting for me as well to learn about XR. It's uh, truly is gonna transform the education yeah. training industry. Uh, yeah, that's good to know, Hamda, thank you. Uh, so at the end, I'm gonna show you a very short video of uh, the Innovation Lounge, which we have uh, at the park. Can you see the screen?
Okay, I think uh, this is the end of our webinar today. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, thank you, Mr. Akram. It was a very interesting session. Thank you very much, uh, Hamdan. Thank you all for joining in. Uh, it was a pleasure and we'll see you.